So, um, for those who don't know, the man in the picture is Morena Ramurebuli. He is a coach of, um, a coach in Botswana. He coaches uh, Galaxy, uh, Joaquin Galaxy, a team that knocked out Pirates, for those who want a reference. They knocked out Pirates last year in the preliminary rounds of the CAF, Con uh, CAF Champions League. And they played in the Champions League. They've just won the league again. He's done the double. Uh, he's just won the league again, which means that he's going to stamp his ticket again to go to get a chance to get into the Champions League through the preliminary rounds that all the teams have to play. He's been linked to this Kukune job. Um, Kukune, of course, have now finally come out and said that Usiema uh, has been fired. We knew that from the suspension. From the moment they spoke about the suspension, we knew that they had parted ways. This is what this is a tactic in South Africa. Solo Siema, who did very well in the couple of months that he had with the team, uh, turned them around, put them into fourth place uh, for them to play Confed, for example. Um, so there's rumors that they're looking for a new coach, and Ramo Rebuli is uh, the, the, the top candidate or one of the candidates. I want to speak about two things. Number one, is it an upgrade to come back to South Africa from Botswana? And I want to put it in this sense. Joaneng has money. They won the league. He's playing Champions League again. Why would you then choose to come back to South Africa? And I understand the South African League is better run, is commercially more viable. But can you imagine going from playing regular Champions League football to coming back here and maybe fighting for third or fourth place. You're not going to win the league. Arguably, you might not even come second. Uh, knowing that Pirates is in the hunt, Stellenbosch might be in the hunt, Supersport is always there. Uh, it's a very tall order to try win that league. So is it really an upgrade? To say that Ramo Rebuli coming back to South Africa uh, is going to be a good thing. And do you know what I love about Ramo Rebuli? He's building his name. We didn't know who he was. He was coaching the Kosafa team at some point. Uh, he was in SA. And it goes back to the point that I always say that maybe you should go outside to go build your name with people that are going to maybe uh, respect you a little bit better, give you a chance, because the South African League is a very closed off coaching league in terms of coaching. So having Ramu Rebuli uh, coaching on that side, going to things like the Champions League. Guys, last year we had one team in the Champions League. We have not had a steady second team in South Africa in the Champions League. You could win the league three, four, five times with Joaneng and play Champions League every year and go elsewhere. Why not go to Morocco, Tanzania, all of those other places? Egypt. Why not go there? Maybe go to Saudi or anywhere from there. Why come back here? And I'm hoping that if he really is a front runner, make sure that contract is, is fine. We just spoke about contracts right now. Make sure that contract is, is proper. But the secondary thing that I want to speak about um, under this topic, there's a trend in the PSL. And for me, it's a very, it's an irritating trend. You hire your, your, your overseas coaches with the UEFA licenses and all of that. They fail. Then you bring in a local coach who does well, but you're unwilling to give him a contract, a proper contract. You're unwilling to let him go into a transfer market and buy players. You look at your Dan Dancers, you look at your CMAs who have done well. CMA did well at two separate clubs. Remember, he's part of the reason why Polukwane City was a top, what, five, six club? left that one midway through, joined as Kukune uh, for, for, what, five months, got them into fourth place. So we see them do these things, 
But the clubs don't respect them enough to even go, okay, guy, you did so well. We're going to trust you. Think about Musa Nyatam. How many times has he had to come in, step in and save the club? Iswalos. But yet at no point do they go, you've done such a stellar job. Here's the job. Here's a proper contract. Here's building blocks. But yet we see the foreign coaches. Guys, uh, remember Fosloza, Romain Foltz. We remember him failing at every place that he went, but getting signed and getting given jobs. In fact, at Amazulu, they wanted to keep him and making the technical director. Where is that energy for when Dan Dan saves you from a, a, a relegation? Where is that energy for when Siema puts you top four? Where is that energy when Brendan Truter back then makes Morocco Swallows a, a, a number two team? Then you hear about the phantom suspensions. You hear about the, 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 the phantom technical directors that are brought in. How do we grow our football if the guys that are doing well are not given a chance to go and do well even more? How do we grow our football? Again, going back to even the previous topic that we spoke about. When everything local is looked down upon. When everything local you try and squeeze everything out of. No, Zwagala, Bambi team, four months. Uh, after four months, we'll come and review this thing. And the part that gets, that really gets on my nerves is that today you fired this coach who put you there. Tomorrow, you bring a random coach from somewhere else. Think about the Pablo Franco Martins that came in. Think about the falses. Think about Jose Rivero, even though he's doing well. Manzat Nigazi and Fadlu got to a CAF Confed final. Lost to Aris Burkain, if I'm not mistaken. Why not give them the job? Why not try them in the job? Hey man, you've earned this time. Musa Nyatama, you've saved us for the third season now. After the Midden Dobbs came in, after all of these different player coaches came in. You know what? For the next season, we're going to give you a chance at this job. A proper hit. A proper chance. We're going to back you. Guys, we all know the phone calls that are made. We all know the phone calls that are made when these teams are struggling. And we all know the phone calls that are made when the teams are doing well and the coach needs to be suspended. Ramu Rebul is not going to be cheap. I hope. I, I, I genuinely hope that his representatives don't make him cheap. Flying in a coach from Europe is not cheap. Housing, transport, uh, sometimes family, flights in and out, their actual salary, all of those things. When you had a CM in your pocket, when you had a 10 tenths in your pocket, what is it? What is it about local teams that they would much rather screw over our players, our coaches, but they will do right by those overseas people? They will do right. Huh? When Jasmine is not your, your, your agent, they will do right by you. First topic, we literally spoke about it. First topic, we spoke about uh, the contracts that these teams are giving out and that the international players are getting all their monies back when they're wronged. I see the same thing happening with our coaches. And it's not even like they're doing badly. Guys, Dan Dance to this day still has the only trophy that TS Galaxy has won. I don't hear Tim Sugazi waxing lyrical about what Dan Dance was able to do. But yet he's talking up this UEFA pro. Oh, 
You know, every team needs a UEFA Pro coach. UEFA Pro has not even sniffed top four. Has not finished in a place where you can be like, okay, I want about Rivero, at least they're doing something. So it's something we have to look at. We also have to get over this attitude that we are better. That uh, Ramo Reboli should be thankful that Kukun is coming for him. That is a Champions League playing coach. Who knocked out the second best team in Africa, in South Africa. Who won at We Dead. Why then do we expect him to grovel and be happy coming back here? We're doing it with Pizzo as well. Why should Pizzo come back to the PSL? What is there to gain from conquering the PSL? It's an attitude we need to get, get past. But also, can we please respect our own? We're killing so many bright coaches. And I don't know why. They said that there's people in the background that make noises uh, when the coach is doing well. There's people in the background that actually run teams. But on the face of it, it doesn't make sense. And it's happening all through the PSL, even in the first division. Nangu Tenten's, again, the main culprit. We've spoken about him. I don't want to go deep into what I expect from him, but he's taken Barocca from a, what, a mid to lower table team and put them up into a, a playoff to potentially get into the PSL. They get rid of him mid playoff. You take Gavin Hunt, Example that Kay's achieved. It's a transfer ban year. You can't sign players. You go with what you have and you get us to a semi-final of the CAF, uh, CAF Champions League. Something that Chiefs has never done. We don't have a star. There's two stars in SA. We don't have one of those. This coach gets you there. He gets fired. Then his assistant takes over, gets you through the semi-final. He gets demoted for who? Oh yeah, that English guy, Stuart Baxter. We need to respect our own. Um, 